A new bureaucracy to manage and promote hunting in Victoria was among the less trumpeted announcements in last week's state budget. Hunters have welcomed the decision to spend $8 million to establish the Game Management Authority. But landowners and conservationists say the approach misses the mark. They're sceptical it'll do anything to combat burgeoning deer populations, which they say are damaging property and the environment. They want to cull the animals, arguing they're a pest. James Bennett reports. Steve Viney is passionate about deer hunting. A lot of people don't, from my point of view, don't understand it, that aren't into it. They just think we're killers. We look at it totally different. We're, I'm actually putting food on the table, you know, um, and it's something I enjoy doing. He and the Victorian president of the Australian Deer Association, Cole Brumley, have agreed to take 7.30 Victoria hunting. Essentially what we'll do is get to a location um, in the dark, early dawn, um, wait for the light, and then we'll be using binoculars to glass the area, locate the animals. Uh, once we've done that, we'll plan a hunt and it all depends on the wind direction and what's going on, where they are, what they're doing, and then we'll put in a stalk and try and get close enough, take a shot. They're targeting fallow deer, but filming will not be easy. When you say put in a stalk, that's essentially try and get close enough? Yeah, yeah. Using whatever cover you've got, you might have to crawl, you might have to bend down, uh, lower your profile a bit. Stealth is critical. But we want to get into that tray line just over there. That'll give us a good view of the whole paddock when the daylight comes. Dawn reveals an unexpected adversary, fog. Its cover and our silence allow some close encounters, but the morning calm is punctuated abruptly by an urgent whisper. The white buck straight out there. The fog has lifted only slightly, but with binoculars, the hunters can see a target. Steve creeps into position. Only for the fog to return. An hour later, cold and stiff, Cole Brumley reluctantly acknowledges the game is up. With these animals, you probably get one 50% of the time, perhaps a bit better. Um, but when it's fog like that, there's nothing you can do. Cole Brumley and his fellow hunters are also engaged in another very different battle, the status of their quarry. The main problem is the ones on the farm fringe where they're getting into properties and what we don't want is the status of deer to be changed from game to anything like a pest. If deer were declared a pest species, not game, hunting grounds would be restricted and currently banned methods allowed. To date, the hunters have been successful, much to conservationists' frustration. In Victoria at the moment, a landowner still needs a permit to get uh, permission to kill a deer on their land. And the methods of, of killing the deer are also constrained to make sure you don't kill too many deer. Now that is wrong. It is a serious pest species and it should be declared as such. And the resistance from the hunters has prevented it. They may have eluded the ABC's lens on this high country hunt, but just outside of Healesville, deer are happy to pose for Kathy Cameron's motion sensitive camera. And they don't mind her rhubarb either. And yeah, they'd eat every bit of it if they could get at it. It's only rhubarb, but it's my rhubarb and I don't want the deer to be eating it. They've also consumed Kathy Cameron's fruit, even some flowers, and she wants them classed as pests. Yes, of course they're feral. This is all where the deer go. Neighbour Brian Blake's property bears the scars of deer coming out of the hills to eat and drink. Matter of fact, it's, they might have hit it, but that's probably why it's broken there. It's, it's, uh, and they come, they come down here, there's, there's, other, there's about a dozen tracks all the way through here. He too considers them a pest. Something will really have to be done, I think, about it. And everybody, everybody in the whole area thinks the same thing. 
Agriculture Minister Peter Walsh acknowledges the problem, but arguing the case for the Coalition's game authority, he says growing deer numbers represent an opportunity. It is something we, could look, we are looking at now as to how we can actually improve the opportunity for people to control deer on private property, but there is hunting opportunities in quite a, lot of, quite a large part of particularly the high country of Victoria. A lot of Victorians go up there. We believe there's an opportunity to actually get overseas visitors to go there as well. The Department of Sustainability and Environment estimates that last financial year hunters killed more than 41,000 deer across Victoria, but less than a third of those were shot on private land. So the Agriculture Minister believes he can please both hunters and landowners. One of the things we are looking at as to whether, whether there can be uh, deer can be declared a pest animal on private property for argument's sake so that people could actually control it on their land. But obviously the overwhelming majority of the deer are in, in, in public, public land. And that majority are set to remain game animals, protected from spotlight shooting, poisoning or large-scale aerial culls. Colt Brumling believes that will allow hunters to market themselves as the solution for farmers, not the problem. If we have that relationship, then we, they will come to us if they've got problems or other hunting organisations for that matter and just um, deal with it rather than going to um, you know, other avenues. Conservationists, though, fear it'll entrench a system designed to preserve deer instead of controlling them. Already we, we believe game management in Victoria is still very hunter-centric. To become more hunter-centric, you're going to see more serious downsides for conservation.